Hi everyone, in today's Martini Monday, we are going to revisit my very first basket of doom where I selected a bunch of old products in my makeup stash to test out in the month of January and see if I want to keep them or not. So if you guys are curious to hear what made it through my basket of doom and what has left the chopping block and what I'm going to declutter, then please keep on watching. Cheers everyone, happy martini Monday. Let me take a sip of my drink because I still haven't and you know that because this red lipstick is nowhere on the glass and then I will tell you a little bit more about what I'm drinking today. Oh, that's good. That is really good. So I am having an elderflower vodka martini, but I did muddle a bunch of cucumbers into the vodka because I didn't have a cucumber vodka. And for those who know me, know that I love me a really good cucumber flavored drink, especially in the summer. We're definitely not in the summer. It is like January 25th or 6th when I'm filming this. It is though about... 45 or 50 degrees outside and raining like crazy. We've had so much rain this January. I mean, I guess some people are like, well, at least it's not snow. I almost at this point prefer snow because it's just been a lot of rain. The winter has been very, very strange. Anyway, we're not here for the weather, although you guys are going to hear the rain because as you know from previous videos, my AC is directly behind my phone that I film on. So you guys are going to hear all the raindrops falling on the windowsill and on my air conditioning, which yes, I never bothered to take out. I should have, but I didn't. Don't judge. Anyway, so yeah, I am drinking vodka, elderflower, I guess cucumber, you could say, martini. There is a tiny bit of lemon juice in there as well. And I will, as always, link the recipe down in the description box. It is not from Keats Cocktails today, which is my favorite website for my drinks, because there was actually a very interesting elderflower drink on this website, but I was missing one or two of the ingredients. So I wasn't able to make that one, but maybe in the future. Future. Oh, this rain. This rain is going to drive me nuts. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to make a new drink every single week. And if I am, they're not always going to be martinis after a while, or at least they're not maybe going to be called martinis, but I can definitely pour them into a martini glass. But yeah, cheers. Oh, let's see. Lipstick, lipstick. Oh, all of my teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the beginning of the month, I did a basket of doom where I selected a bunch of products. These were not new products. These were really old products actually in my collection that I wanted to revisit, retest, and see if they're going to stick around or not. And that's kind of the theme of this year for the most part. While I do want to also try all of my basket of shame items, or at least as many as I can get through, and th that's my basket of products I've never used, whereas I, I've got a lot of baskets. In fact, today we're rolling with the bag because I've run out of baskets. I have like multiple baskets under this desk and there's just only so many baskets a girl with a New York City studio apartment can have. Before we jump in and I tell you which products I am going to keep in my collection, I just wanted to welcome you back to my channel or if you're new here, then welcome. Hi, my name is Natalia. I'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty and this is my year of discovering what is already in my collection and if I am making purchases I would like to do that with the utmost of intention and really only bring in products that I feel either present me with a new formula or a new color combination or something that really is super super unique so with that said if you're interested in that kind of content then I really do hope you will consider subscribing and joining us here and let's jump in and see which products are going to get the boot okay so as I said I've migrated things into a bag because I used the other basket for it basically is now a basket of shame under my desk of all the non eyeshadow products and that video you guys may have seen it was another martini Monday let me maybe pull everything out lay it out on my desk in front of me and then we can discuss okay. primers I wanted to try these two primers this month the dr. Brandt pores no more luminizer primer and the Becca backlight 
priming filter. I was telling you guys in the initial video that I feel like this is starting to accentuate all of my skin imperfections as I age. And this, I remember I used to really, really like. I tried this once and it smelled weird. So I have a feeling this has gone off. So whether I like it or not, I'm gonna have to declutter it. And this I was torn on and it wasn't really until today that I decided I think I'm also gonna let this go. I'm like halfway through. So there's a part of me that really wants to like put this in a project pan and just use it up. But I was thinking, even though it's not the same type of product, I recently got the Hollywood Flawless Filter, the Charlotte Tilbury, and I've only tried this a couple of times since I bought it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna let this go. This way I get to actually use my newer product instead. And while they're not the same, the way I would use them would be similar before my foundation to add a glow. So I think both of these are going to leave and this is something i would love to hear from you guys do you want me to just trash or give away these products as i go do you want me to save them for my big declutters, which will be coming later in the year. What do you think I should do? How how should I make this work? Since this is gonna be a monthly series and only a few products here and there are going to be decluttered. Obviously, I'm not going to do a dedicated declutter video with just these products, but I could hold on to them and you know, every three or six months do like a larger declutter in case there's also other products that I'm trying behind the scenes that are not in the basket of doom that all also make it out of my collection. I, I haven't figured out how best to do this. So if you have any suggestions for me, I would love to hear it because I don't want to be redundant, but at the same time, I also kind of want to have some sort of a cohesive decluttering system. So if you can help me out with that, that would be great. But yeah, these two, gone a uh, base product the only one i selected for the month for the blah, blah, blah. the only one i selected for the month of january and put in my basket of doom was this becca light shifter doing tint in luminary 01 and i wore this product i think in that basket of doom video and one other time one other video i can't remember now which one and while i don't hate this product i enjoy it i think it gives a really nice finish i'm glowy i just don't think it does enough for me to bother keeping this. I have other tints that I prefer. I'm thinking of the Wet n Wild one that I reach for a lot. I just recently bought the uh, Huda Beauty Glowish, which while I've only tried once so far, I feel like is similar enough where I really don't need both of these. If you have this, if you have a better way of using it, I'm willing to give it one more chance behind the scenes, but as of right now, I'm really leaning towards letting this product go. For for concealer, I decided to use the Urban Decay Naked Skin this month, and while it is on the lighter side of what I now prefer, right now in the winter, I actually think the shade works, and you know, as long as I hydrate my eyes and use an eye cream regularly and put like a glowy or hydrating primer underneath, I actually don't mind this. I um, thought that it might be now too drying with my aging skin and all, but I think I can make this work. And this is one I think I'm going to keep around and actually give more use. I'm not saying, you know, I'm going to be able to use it up complete. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe this will end up in a project pan or something, but it takes me a long time to go through concealers. I have used one of these up completely in the past, but that was even before I was on YouTube. And then for powder, I also chose just one and I chose my Maybelline Fit Me in 110 Porcelain. I do find it slightly too drying. Maybe it would work better for me in the summer, but to be honest, I just don't feel like waiting that long. I have other powders I prefer. If you guys have seen my inventory, which was my very, very first uh, Martini Monday, I somehow have so many loose powders that I wasn't even aware of that I feel like by the time I actually try all of my products, it's going to be another year that I get around to using this. While, as I said, I didn't mind it, I also didn't love it. It was meh. It was just okay. And I think I'm at a point where I need to start letting go of products that are just okay, even if I am like the frugal type that likes to use things up. There's just no way I'm going to be able to use up, you know, 15 powders or whatever I have in combined total in the next, I don't even know how many years. I'm going to just part ways with this one and instead give love to other powders that I'm going to enjoy. And more. for uh, bronzing type products, the milk. Milk 
stick. It still looks sealed because it partially is. I did actually open it. I bought this at Marshalls for $9.99 and I'm guessing by then this product was already getting old because by the time I opened it, first of all, it smells, I don't know how to describe it. People I think sometimes call it what, like the Play-Doh scent. I don't really want to dig my fingers into this and like take this off because it's never easy. But basically there's like a huge crack even down the middle of this thing by now. It's getting dry. It smells weird and frankly I have the rare beauty stick oh and I also have the Westman Atelier don't think I have any other cream bronzing products but I don't need any more and I feel weary of putting this on my face and yes I really enjoyed the tiny little one that I used to have where the packaging broke on me and yes they don't make this size anymore this was the jumbo size and then they downgraded it but I think kept the price the same so that's why these went into TJ Maxx and Marshalls but that tells me that you know this is the original batch or whatever so this thing is old and as much as it pains me to waste this much product and you know the ten dollars that I paid for it I just don't want to take a chance with my skin I don't want to break out so this is going in the trash. And then the other two bronzing products, I think I'm actually going to keep. So surprisingly enough, this little mini Ulta Beauty sample thing that has n nothing, no information on it, except that it's called a bronzer and an illuminator. I really, really like this thing. I'm wearing both products today, along with a blush that you guys will see later. I think this would be perfect for travel and this would be perfect to put in a project pan because it's such a small size this is something I could see myself actually maybe using up in a year this was this was a surprise hit so I'm really excited I pulled this into my basket of doom because I really enjoyed using this I use this at least three or four times this month okay but then there's benefit hula and this is one that I know with the powder I was like I don't want to wait until summertime this is one I'm gonna wait until summertime I feel like the shade right now is definitely too orange for me but I would like to try it when I am a little bit deeper. That's that's a strong word. I don't ever get deeper. When I'm a teensy tiny bit less paper white and see if I can still make this work. Primarily, primarily, this is like the mini project panner in me because I'm not really a big project panner, but you know, I, I'd like to be. Like that's that's a dream of mine is to actually be able to go through the majority of my products one, of, one fine day. Part of me just is like, I already have pan. I want to see this pan expand. I want to see this product disappear. So I'd like to see if I can make this work in the summer. So I am going to keep both of those bronzing products. Blush, we're going to have a 50-50 situation. Let me tell you the ones that I am going to get rid of. I'm not hating on milk and this is a beautiful shade. I have the same issue as I had with my mini bronzer and this is why I had to get rid of the stick. Do you see this? I am twisting. I am turning and nothing is happening. So yes, I can use this for a little while longer, but after that, no can do. Plus, this picked up my foundation. So as, as nice as the color is, I do enjoy the color. I think this isn't work. It, this just didn't work. It didn't work. The work didn't work. It didn't work because it, as I said, picked up my foundation. It stayed a little bit too sticky, even from my dewy loving ways. And yeah, and it, it doesn't work. So milk change your packaging because it ain't working and then the other one i'm gonna get rid of is the wander trip for two i have the blush on today and while it's pretty mira i can actually yeah it's it's very nice i like the blush i do i really like the blush the problem is i don't like it enough to really care to grab for this and then this other thing that's supposed to be a bronzer i didn't even bother trying it this month i i don't even know what i would have done with it it's too dark for me to use as a powder it's too light for anyone to use as a bronzer i have no idea what the heck that is doing there and what is it supposed to be but while this blush is pretty it's not pretty enough for me to reach for this product i have so much blush that i love so much more i do really like the packaging but you know i'm not gonna keep a blush that i will almost never reach for just for this pretty packaging so we're gonna get rid of that and then the two blushes that i am going to keep is the benefit dallas blush this i wore in a video all by itself i can't again i don't remember which videos but if i have any pictures of any looks i created with any of this makeup or whatnot maybe in editing i can pop a few things in but 
I used this and nothing else. I used this as basically like a bronzer blush combo. And I think that day I didn't even bother putting highlighter on. And I really, really liked the look. So I'm gonna keep the Dallas blush. And I'm also gonna keep the Bobbi Brown blush. I enjoyed this. This is a nude pink. I wore this, I can't remember, once or twice in January. Uh, definitely once on camera. I liked it and I'm keeping it because this is a shade that last year really made a big comeback. And I think in the winter time especially, this is a good one to have. And I think it's my only baby pink uh, shade of this, you know, brightness that I actually own. So I am going to hold on to that. And then the two highlighters that I selected were the Urban Decay Afterglow in Sin. I love this packaging. When they did the blushes and the highlighters in this packaging, I can't remember if they also had bronzers. I, I know I didn't have any. I love the fact that you could see through, especially for the blushes. That was so cool because you could see just a little bit of the shade peeking through. Plus they usually would put the sticker in the matching shade. I use this highlighter a ton. And same with this one. This is the Lorac highlighter in Starlight. They have some sort of a longer name. And I also used to love, love, love this highlighter. And actually it's a lot more flaky, a lot drier in the pan than I think it was when I first initially got it. It always had a lot of kick up, but I feel like now it has a little bit more, but it still applies really nicely on the cheeks. Until today, I was thinking I would keep the rock let go of the urban decay and then i decided to just swatch a couple of other things that i have been pulling for more often over the past year or two and i compared this to my mac double gleam highlighter and they are not the same they're not the same in formula or even in color. This is a little bit more, I would say like champagne, ye leaning yellow, but I don't think it's different enough for me to justify keeping either one of these because they're very similar in tone. The sin is slightly deeper on my skin. It's more like exactly my skin tone, whereas the Lorac is a bit more icy. It pains me honestly to get rid of either one of these, but I think it's time. I think I need to. And I already, I remember I remember thinking, well, if I do a highlighter declutter, and this I was thinking even back in December before I jumped back on YouTube a bit more regularly, I had filmed over the summer of 2022 and into the fall a couple of declutter videos already because I was prepping myself to return back to YouTube and I wanted to start with a cleaner slate. I wanted to get rid of some of the products, which is essentially what I'm doing now because I never did return to YouTube for technical reasons. Anyway, it th doesn't matter. Uh, irrelevant. What is relevant is I was going to do my highlighter declutter and I remember thinking I have a feeling these two are gonna go even though I really don't want to let them go. So that's why I put them into my January basket of doom. I really wanted to give these one last chance to prove to me that I can't live without them but I think I can. So I think these two highlighters are leaving my collection. I guess let's do all the lips and because there's there's a lot and I feel like I'm sweating just thinking about the lipstick products because I am I, I'm gonna have to make some decisions on the spot here all right I had a bunch of lip liners the ones that I'm definitely going to keep is this real her I am precious I think I am precious is the actual shade name so you can see it on the tip of the liner really enjoyed this liner it is still creamy I have had to sharpen it once or twice this month because I used it several times I don't know if the cap is matching or if I had to use a different cap one would think it used to be that pearly white don't know no, I got it in a subscription years ago. And then I'm also going to keep my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil. This is, it's a naked. I think I have another one where I used to, maybe I used it up, that was actually a naked. This one is deeper. So this was a mislabeling or something, probably why I got it in some sort of a discount store, like a Nordstrom Rack or who knows by now. I honestly don't remember. Maybe online on some sort of a clearance somewhere because I don't think this is, the shade naked but whatever shade this is and it will remain a mystery i really enjoy it and i'd like to keep these two pencils for sure one i did not get to use is this pixie lip 
contour liner thing. It's probably gonna roll over into my February basket of doom. I initially talked to you guys about how if something doesn't get used, I might just go ahead and declutter it. But something like this, I actually would like to try. See if this is a gimmick or if this really works. And I completely forgot about it. So I'm gonna give this one more chance, put it in my February basket of doom. That video I will film separately. I made that decision based on how long-winded I am and nobody last time really chimed in the comments whether you guys cared about me doing it all in one video or separating so i've decided i'm gonna separate all right now we have these these are my sephora what are these called the rouge gel lip liners and i have it in rose wine i might have other shades but these are the three i selected in creme de la creme and in wine O. I love these colors I don't remember if I actually got to use all three this month. I know I used at least two of these. I love these colors, but they are too creamy for me to be a lip liner. And I would actually use them as a straight up lipstick. And I would even put these in project pans and use them up this way. The problem is, and they've always had the smell. It's not because they've gone off. I remember that they've always had this weird, chemically play-doh-y i don't know maybe it's because you know these are cheaper products because sephora is more of a budget brand like their in-house brand i don't know if it's because they don't put fragrance in their products or what but i just can't i can't get past that scent and the problem is it's not like i put it on and the smell dissipates unless i put something else on another lipstick that the taste and the smell overpowers this i will continue to taste and smell that weird chemically play-doh-y whatever it is scent i can't do it i love the design I love the colors. I would love to use them as lipsticks, but I just have to let them go because I know I'm gonna avoid using them because I'm not going to want to deal with that smell and therefore that. I don't know, sometimes, you know how sometimes smell translates into a taste? That's what I get with these. So these are going bye-bye. Okay, and then there's one liner that I'm undecided about, and that's the Jonte Blue in Spice. At first, I thought it was gonna be super like hard, and dried up but actually once i used it a couple of times and then sharpened it it really became a pretty nice aligner it's a like a brown a straight up brown i don't have too many of these so i i don't know i think i'm gonna keep it and then in a few months if i see that i'm really never reaching for it maybe at that point i will declutter it okay and then we have all of my uh, urban decay revolution lipsticks these are the oldies the oldies the ones that have been repackaged and reformulated multiple times by now i'm going to i'm going to get rid of some maybe probably i really like these lipsticks we are going to get rid of fiend because it is too pink for me it's the one that i was actually wearing in my original january basket of doom video that's gonna go because i'm not gonna reach for that shade often enough to justify keeping it i am going to keep however rapture i really like this shade i wore it in some other video again if i remember the looks i'll post pictures i am going to keep naked this used to be one of my favorite lipsticks of all time this is all I have left so I'm going to keep it because maybe maybe this will show up in a project pan or some such thing I don't know I haven't decided and then out of my uh, creamy ones because these gunmetal packaging ones are like the more cream formula and then the black packaging is supposed to be the more matte formula so this one is in venom it's like this really cool magenta purple but then i also have matte after dark and then i also have i have matte bitter sweet and i just don't feel like i need all three of these so we're gonna swatch and make this decision right here right now oh that is so smooth still they are old but they are so smooth oh my goodness wow so we've got venom this is the non-matte after dark in the center and bittersweet on the end here I'm going to keep bittersweet. I don't think I really have anything quite like that. I have fuchsia colors in my collection, but I don't think I have anything quite like this where it is this bright, bright pink leaning. I don't even know what would this be like leaning lavender. No, not lavender. I don't know. I'm not always very good at describing colors. And then these two, I feel like are just way too similar. Not to mention, I used to really love these 
darker purple burgundy lips and i haven't really been wearing those the, or the berries i haven't really been wearing those quite as much so i really don't feel like i need both i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to for now keep the more matte formula even though i don't really think it's matte i think it's still too shiny to be matte because in such a deep color i don't think i'm gonna feel comfortable wearing this more slippy one so we are gonna get rid of venom in the gunmetal packaging and we are going to keep after dark in the black packaging so i'm keeping bittersweet and after dark from the matte formula and naked and rapture from the gunmetal cream formula and that does leave us still with one more matte lipstick and it is in bad blood which is the red that i have on my lips right now if you guys know me you know i love me a good red the problem is this one's way too shiny for me and uh because of that i'm just too paranoid it gets on my teeth more i'm not gonna reach for it so it's gonna go that leaves us with eyes i realized i don't think i put any eyeliners in my basket of doom did i i'll have to change that for the month of february because i definitely need to go through and see which of my eyeliners are still good and which ones need to go so for eye shadow if you guys watch my introduction my basket of doom january intro you know that i am going with the system where i'm choosing three old palettes to test each month because i also want to use my newer palettes use my basket of shame brand new eyeshadow palettes maybe occasionally still purchase a few palettes this year eyeshadow palettes is where like my true love lies so i don't want to overwhelm myself with just the old products but i do want to go through my old palettes and be realistic with how many i'm actually going to use i did try the urban decay eyeshadow primer potion in the anti-aging i also tried the original this month and i definitely do prefer the original i have a little baby size but who cares i have enough eyeshadow primers to last me years so i think i'm going to declutter this one because this one makes my eyeshadows crease i feel like it just doesn't really do anything like it sort of disappears into my eyes it does not give me a sticky enough base to put my eyeshadows on it's it's sort of like i, I don't know a little eye cream or something for my eyes i can do that with my eye creams i definitely don't need my eyeshadow primer to be doing that the three eyeshadow palettes i chose for january ColourPop, it's my pleasure two faced uh, chocolate bonbons and beach cosmetics royal affair i created lovely looks with all three of these but to be honest none of them were wow enough for me considering i have over 150 eyeshadow palettes to keep these so unfortunately i think all three of these are gonna go the two faced chocolate bonbons i think was the palette i wore in my initial introduction of the basket of doom i don't believe i reached for it again i think that was the only time i used it maybe i just played around and swatched it or some such thing ColourPop, it's my pleasure i really enjoyed the colors that we have here there's some really pretty colors this um mr sandman i think back in the day was one of the first duochromes a major brand did it was like so popular i don't think the quality of these has held up through the years it just feels drier than what i remember back when i initially bought it i don't even know if these old palettes if the shadows pop out for me to maybe use a couple of these as singles because i, I I do want to build my own palettes and such later this year unless these pop out which tell me if they do I, I gotta buy one of those magnet tools so i think this palette is gonna go this was the one i was the most torn on just because it has the most variety it has some really really beautiful shades but again i don't think the formula held up very well i haven't actually tried any of the shimmers on my eyes i am wearing an all matte look with this palette today and while they swatch beautifully they do these mattes swatch gorgeous to to this day even though i've had this palette for years but then when you pick them up because they're so powdery i feel like they take a lot of building up and i don't know i just don't think i'm going to want to put in this much effort into a palette that while it's super super pretty I probably have these shades in so many other palettes in now more updated, more modern 
better formulas so as much as it pains me because i really do like this palette i think it's gonna go so all three of my january basket of doom eyeshadow palettes are going to leave my collection at some point and again please let me know how you think i should do that if i should save some of these palettes as well as the other ones i'm going to declutter behind the scenes and just do one giant eyeshadow palette declutter i've always wanted to do one of those and i just Still haven't gotten around to it so maybe i should consider just saving these and then just like breezing through them in those videos but i know they also tend to attract views so i don't know i mean not 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 that i'm really care too much but you know if, if i'm going to sensationalize this a little bit then i guess it's always better if you start with more palettes and you declutter more regardless if you think that's lame also let me know i i won't get offended uh, <laughs> yeah so, so let's do a final little count i guess of we're just a little run through of what i kept i've kept the concealer i got rid of the two primers and the tint um i kept two blushes got rid of two i kept two bronzers got rid of one i kept four lip liners and got rid of three i kept four four lipsticks got rid of three that's pretty funny i didn't plan it that way obviously and all of my eyeshadow palettes are going am i forgetting anything else oh and i decluttered the powder as well kind of you know almost like a 50 50 split if you have any suggestions for how else i can tweak this series and make it even better leave them down below other than that i am going to go finish my drink I'll let you guys go and i thank you so so much for being here and for keeping up with all of my baskets and um one more reminder if you haven't already to please subscribe i hope that you guys are all doing really really well that you are continuing to stay safe and healthy take care of yourselves and those around you and i can't wait to see you in my next video cheers and bye guys